Western, yes, but made in Italy. The Italian Western exploded across the screens of Europe when an unknown director, Sergio Leone, made a little sleeper called Per un pugno de dollari, or for a fistful of dollars, and broke every Italian box office record. Sergio Leone imported his hero, Clint Eastwood, the American TV star, who was then unknown in Europe. To sell the Italian public, every effort was made to pass it off as the authentic Hollywood product. Names of Italian actors were changed, and even Sergio Leone became uh, Bob Robertson. But Fistful was a smash hit, so Bob Robertson became Sergio Leone again. And Clint Eastwood, well, Rowdy Yates wasn't Rowdy Yates no more. In fact, Clint starred in the sequel for a few dollars more with Lee Van Cleef, an even bigger success. Well, that set the trend. Dollar, it seemed, was the magic word, so all the films had dollar in their titles. Then somebody discovered Ringo, changed Juliana Gemma's name to Montgomery Wood, and made a bundle on a yarn called A Pistol for Ringo. Now, Ringo was the magic word. So Italians went to see Ringo, the face of revenge, with Anthony Steffen. Ringo of Nebraska with Ken Clark. A Woman for Ringo with Sean Flynn. Kill Johnny Ringo with Brett Halsey. And finally, A Coffin for Ringo with Mr. X-Tarzan, Lex Barker. About this time, Sergio Leone made his third winner, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. To Clint Eastwood and Lee Van Cleef, he added another American, Eli Wallach. By now, titles were going in wild directions. Gringo, throw the gun away. Run, man, run. Stranger, make the sign of the cross. 
Three crosses not to die. Chrysanthemums for a load of carrion. His name screamed Vendetta. If you meet Sartana, pray for your death. Kill them all and come back alone. Azione, via così. Uno, due, tre. Prendi il tempo. Via sotto. Uno, là. No, l'unica. Vanno bene tutti. L'unica cosa è questo colpo qui che sembra proprio da karate. Scusami, te momento della. Come? Adesso qui, dopo il destro. Uno, evitalo. Via così. Bang. Da qua, poi mi prende il collo, spazzi di qua, così, sforzo, questo la mano così, eh. E va giù per te. Hai capito? Excuse me, are you the head stunt man? I am the director here. Sorry. Oh? What is the title of this film? The Italian title is Vado, Vedo e Sparo. A western. Uh, what's your name? Enzo G. Castellari. Tell me, why are Westerns so popular in Italy? Westerns are popular everywhere. Some of the first films made were Westerns. In Italy, there's no doubt that it was Sergio Leone and the big success of For a Fistful of Dollars that opened the road to the Westerns made in Europe. I would say it is the public who decides on the success of a film or a kind of film. And the public, fans in Westerns, and escape from its, its daily problems and worries. There have been so many serious, heavy, difficult films in recent years that the public is tired of trying to understand them. <laughs> Me too. The Western is different. The spectator sits and is just amused in a world of fantasy with horses, rides, fights, and chases. I guess that it is directed at the child that remains in most of us. Via al fondo! Okay, follow him. Panoramic. Okay, stop, that's enough. Enzo. Yeah? How many Westerns have you directed so far? O only four, but very, very good. And what were you doing before making westerns? The usual thing, assistant director. I'm very thankful to the western because they gave me my first chance to direct. You see, I'm 29 years old, which I think is pretty young for a director. There is such a demand for westerns that they need many directors. And that always gives a chance to the young ones. If it were not for the western, I would probably still be an assistant. Infatti sotto i cavalli. Lallo che sta ancora mai in alto, mai in alto. Lui butta il sacco della posta, butta il sacco della posta sotto. Infatti, tom, 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 tom. Questo se ne va, Lallo monta in corsa, noi seguiamo i panorami fino alla giù. Italian westerns are noted for their scenes of violence. What about your films? I think that violence has gone a bit out of fashion. The first Italian westerns had scenes with broken heads, broken limbs, torture, much blood. Yes, it made a strong impression on the spectators, but such effects, they cannot be repeated too often, or well, they lose their punch. Personally, I am not able to shoot these scenes. Sometimes uh, I would like to. They fascinate me, but I cannot. My style, you see, is, is much lighter. My heroes exchange punches, but I never do show blood. It would interfere with the movement and with the humor I like to give to my film. Enzo, besides westerns, what other kind of films would you like to do? Action films. For me, cinema is motion, moving pictures. It must move. More than the type of film, it is the action really that counts. I personally like making fast-moving films and adding a little fun. <laughs> I believe the spectator should be taken along by the speed of the action, but smile while looking at it. Attentos, rodamos. Motore. Vai, motore. Rodando. Rueda. Vai, motore, lì. Vai. Alto! Alto! Still, westerns are westerns. They all have horses, good guys, and guns. 
Here at Chinichita are shelves of guns, and some so original, they've never been west of the Tiber River. Tell me, who is using these guns? At this moment, six Westerns are using our guns and arms. This is one of them. This revolver, you see here, was Lee Van Clift in the film for a few dollars more. But besides revolvers, what other guns do you have? I have everything. Rifles, mostly Civil War Winchesters, 73 repeaters. All these have been made by Italian craftsmen. They are exactly like the originals, and they all can be fired. An expert could not tell them apart from the real weapon. Part of my job is special effects. This compressed air gun fires a pellet. At the same time, the actors shoot a blank. The pellet breaks the window. Now for the good guy. Shiny boots, laundered Levi's, crisply ironed shirt, fresh shave, and those dark Italian eyes. Uh-oh, they're blue. Well, Clint Eastwood started the whole bit after all. But you can't be sure the hero will win in the end. In some Italian westerns, the good guy loses. Villains are different too. With a savage taste for torture, the Italian bad guy does not kill for profit only but for the violent and sadistic pleasure he gets out of it. As for the girl, well, she's not very important. She's often Mexican, young and well-constructed. Usually being raped in front of the camera. The Western is also having a big influence on Roman life. Let's follow this daytime cowboy to the bunkhouse, the Western Club, where John and Wayne hold forth every night. Now I'm running, 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 must keep a gun in. There's no other way to survive. Yes, I'm running, 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 never returning, won't it? Found me and found gun me down. Ten thousand was the price of my reward. Now let me tell you, buddy, he ain't around today. Now some might say he played a losing card. Now I'm running, running, running. Must keep a gun in. There's no other way to survive. Yes, I'm running, running, running. Never returning, won't it? Western fad has also spread into high fashion. Here in a church on the Palatine Hill, in the heart of Rome, we observe Italy's first Western wedding. A 
I wonder if these two met in the bunkhouse, or maybe on a Western movie set. Italy has always been known for its scenic beauty. Ideal setting for a honeymoon, vacation, or skiing. Sorry, I don't know. No! No, I'm just making a Western here, ma'am. Oh! Doing so many Westerns, Italian filmmakers looked for new twists, like a Western in the snow. After all, doesn't it snow in Montana? This brings up new problems, like horses who don't like snow. It's too rough for a camera car. Well, get a camera horse. If horses don't like the snow, Neither do technicians or actors in sub-zero temperature. But Italian cowboys know ways to cope with the weather. snow on the mountains calls for snow on the set. Would you believe 26 tons of shaving cream? These are only a few of the problems director Sergio Corbucci had to solve. Sergio Corbucci, you are directing your seventh Italian Western, The Great Silence. What do you think is the reason for the success of this type of film? Uh, success? Ah, the Westerns. Uh, uh, the main reason, I believe, is that, well, uh, we assume or, or uh, recreate the atmosphere of our time, a time of violence. Uh, violence uh, without reason and often just for the sake of violence. Uh, it's uh, the same, I think, the main reason for the success of the films of James Bond. In this film, Mr. Corbucci, have you much death and violence? Uh, well, you probably know that I am a Roman, and uh, at home, in some class, is presumed to be the skeleton of Nero, who is proving to be a good example to me. Uh, yes, I am killing a lot of people. <laughs> I have killed more people than Nero and Caligula. But each time, it's more difficult for me to find a new uh, method of murder. Uh, that could be used <laughs> uh, in each film. I have used revolvers and Winchesters, uh, I have killed with uh, dynamite, with gas, with fire, with... Uh, I cut many things. Uh, I have cut ears and uh, made my characters eat their own ears. 
In this film, I cut thumbs. I don't make my actors eat them because, <laughs> because they refused. Unfortunately, I kill too many people. I would like to make a film like I did uh, much earlier, like them I made when I was beginning. My people usually leave. When I wasn't making westerns, I wouldn't shoot anybody. Now, in this film, I notice that you're not recording any direct sound. How do you arrange this with your actors? <laughs> Uh, speech uh, usually in westerns of minor importance because we use every nationality French, uh, Mexican, American. It is often better for the actors to count uh, uh, than uh, to speak. For example, uh, the Frenchman would say, en de trois, the American says, uh, one. That means yes, but it could mean anything. It's unimportant. That's why I hate westerns. After this, Mr. Corbucci, what films will you do? A western, naturally. <laughs> From the snowbound streets of a western cattle town to the placid Roman countryside is a long step. But the international success of Italian westerns, which at first were taken lightly, is drawing well-known actors from all over the world. Many of them have come from America, others from Germany, England, Australia, Spain, Scandinavia, and yes, even Japan. From France has come one of its best-known actors, Jean-Louis Tritignon. Do you enjoy doing a Western? It is fun. I enjoy it. This is one of the tricks of the Western. You start with your head down, then you catch a ray of light under the hat, then down with your head and up again like this. Since you're known primarily as a romantic actor, don't you find it strange to play in a Western? Romantic? Not so much. I have done a lot of films which are more serious or intellectual. But it's fun to be in a film which is the complete opposite of what I've been doing. As the hero, do you kill many people? Yes, maybe 30. In the first two minutes of the film, I've already killed four professional killers who ambush me. Somehow I get them before they get me. It goes on that way until I kill about 40. What part do you play? I play the part of a mute. The audience won't realize it because during the first two-thirds of the film, there's no reason for him to speak. I like it because in most Westerns, they talk too much and say nothing. Is it an easy part? <laughs> yes, but not physically. It's difficult for me because I'm basically clumsy. I hurt myself all the time, like when I draw my gun. Did you have to practice a lot? Oh, have I? In the film, every time I draw my gun, I have to take my glove off. So at home, I used to practice it with a sock in my hand and a long-stemmed artichoke in my pocket. And I used to go through the motions, taking off the sock, reaching for the artichoke, and... Here, an Italian stuntman demonstrates the technique of smashing through a door. In Italian westerns, death is quick for an extra. A little longer for an actor. A feature player dies slowly. But for a star, it's a show in itself. Action! Go ahead. Hold it. Watch out. Your hands are hurting bad, Jean-Louis. Very bad. But wait, you can't now. You feel that everything is slipping away. It's your life that's going. 
Careful. Look again. Now reach you for your gun. Go on. Try to make it fast. Try, go ahead. Go on, grab it. Italian stuntman. Ah, never mind. Sergio Solima, am I disturbing you? No. What are you doing now? I was just working on the editing of my latest western, Corri Uomo Corri. Mr. Solima, you're known as the intellectual of the Italian cinema. How is it that you're making westerns? Well, for one thing, the western has always appealed to intellectuals, and as we know, to most Italians. Also, it gives me the possibility of using a fable. That is, a very popular story which can be understood by any public to express myself. I can describe characters and present themes dealing with the great problems of our times and various controversial questions. Thank you. May I see what you're editing? Sure. By all means. <laughs> Now, this character we see here, we call him Cuchillo, which means knife in Mexican. He is an illiterate Indian who doesn't even know how to use a gun. So he uses a knife, and he's good with it. But for him, the knife is a defensive weapon. Only in exceptional cases does it become a weapon of attack. This isn't the right distance for a knife fight. You chose the knife. I chose the gun. Take a step forward. Another two. Is that okay, Cuchillo? A bit more. So your hero is a Mexican Indian? Yes. I believe the time has come to draw a film hero from the people of the underdeveloped countries, of the third world, so to speak. Well, if he represents the underdeveloped countries, what about the white man? What does he stand for? The technicians? The villain? In a way, yes. But it's not as simple as all that. It's just that once in a while, in the face of super technology, super efficiency. The one who should get the public sympathy is the man who is human, who is simple but resourceful. 